This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You're not gonna do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What is poppin', everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Only Friends Podcast. And as, of course, I'm here with my only friends. What's poppin', Yinzes? What's happening? What's going when, on? When you say that, does that mean that we're the only friends that you have in this world? I have like five more. The only ones he needs. I have like five more. Mm. So we're not your only friends. I mean, there's five more, so. You're doing it for the bit. I mean, there's a bit, but. I'm not know. committing to the bit, and it's ruining y- your you're, intro. Do you like this? Mm. I mean, do you get some like happiness out of this, like yeah. payback? <laughs> have you have you seen this role reversal and how it's worked out? <laughs> it's about the seats, wow. man. It's just about the seats. What's popping, Guapo? Another day. I'm a little sad about this weekend. We'll, but we'll get I'm to sure. it. We'll get yeah, to we'll it. Get, we'll get to that. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that. Lindy. My my favorite part of the intro is when Conrad moves his hand like Birdman when he's like kind of like <laughs> like this. He's always like, "What's popping, everybody?" And he's it's always the same. I'm like, I just see it and I, I smile. You called me out for that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I called you out for that. Yeah. yeah. I love. Well, look. I'm not it's really gonna, funny sitting here. I don't feel the need to do anything with my hands when I'm in the host seat, though. I'm always like. I gotta get myself pumped up. Cause you're yeah. warming up. Look, mm-hmm. you're you're warming up. You're like, what's popping? And then you get it popping. Yeah, we just you know, I'm just trying to warm up. I'm just, just trying to warm up. Just Something cool bur- trying to get a nut. You know, we just out here. We're just trying to get a nut in this world. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Lamash should turn on that AC again. You look like you're well dressed for winter. I know it's hot in here. It's, it's hot. hot. I can't. I can't bear. To be around these people who use fucking air conditioning and God you don't November. you just hate air conditioning you yeah just hate i it. do and it's, it's november like, <laughs> it is november <laughs> oh it's november in vegas that's not november in i'm just my looking pool at Lan- is 42 degrees <laughs> uh, at night it gets cold i'm just looking at landing because i know we works. keep our side at like 66 <laughs> degrees <laughs> look man there's only two inside of that house there are two wolves <laughs> There are the wolves where Conrad turns off the AC at 6 a.m. and I wake up in a pool of sweat. <laughs> and then there's when I go to bed at, call it whatever time, and I turn it all the way down to like 68, 67, 66. So it's just always in between of me being cozy and warm or waking up in a drenched in a shower from the night before. 66 is, is pretty cold. Yo, it gets fucking freezing, dude. I'm just like, yo, I can't do this. And like, I want to sit at my computer in the morning sometimes. So it's just like, I have the fucking air coming straight out of my back. And I'm like, damn. Sorry, Landy. Ricky must lose his mind when you, when you, turn, when you turn it down to 66. You th- no, he's not on that side. My house is huge. Oh, they have their own thermostat for their bedroom. Listen, we have our own sort of system about how the AC works. And the way it normally works is... Whatever it is, is what it is until the other one of us has enough and then just max change it to the other side. It's what's, so true. what's tilting me is that somebody keeps turning off the heat from the living room. And oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, the, that's funny. I smelt it the other day and I was like, who the fuck turned the heat on? A, a normal person because the, <laughs> the temperature gauge in the living room was 65 degrees. Like that is not room temperature. This is not a, like who wants to sit on the couch and watch TV in a goddamn meat locker. <laughs> I mean, you kind of got a point. Wait, is there meat there? I mean, if there were meat, I mean, that'd be a different meat, story. I'm, I'm there. Lamanda might come over. Yeah. Big thanks to our sponsors over at WPT Global. They're just giving it away. Mm-hmm. They're sending over 150 players with 12K packages to the WPT Championship. Get on over there and download WPT Global. Give them a shot. Two Chicks huge poppin'. fan favorites won seats yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. My boy Benjamin and Big I believe Evan, correct? Yeah, uh, the genius who I bubbled last week and everybody got in my fucking mentions giving me a sob story <laughs> <laughs> about how awful it was that I busted this guy on the fucking bubble. He made his way in. They're coming to Vegas. Yep, See that's fucking know. awesome. Benjamin, he um, bubbled twice this week on the 18 person fucking. <clears throat> I got second. Yeah, he got second twice. Well, it seems like these tournaments are so small that it's very easy to bubble them, right? You just get so close anyways. Yeah, I mean, if, in an eight-person one, it's like... Sounds like you register and you're on the bubble. Right. <laughs> I think, yesterday, yeah. I think Sometimes. yesterday they had like 102 runners or something like that, 102 entries. More, slightly more, okay. maybe 112. And eight okay. seats? 
Eight seats, yeah. Wow. Mm. That's, that's some good value. Yeah, the overall was less yesterday. It was only three seats instead of the usual five. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> only, only three seats. Like, that's not anything relevant. It was only $36,000. Yeah. My God. Why yeah. am I here? Yeah, you should go to, outside. I need to go to Canada. Yeah, you should go outside and play. Canada doesn't want you. Wow. Canada, I mean, no offense. But Canada like, will accept me with open arms, actually. Will they? Yep. They're very nice people. I though. have no record. Canada's going to accept me as a perfect citizen. Wow. <laughs> That's you, the model of perfection. How'd you get that expunged? <laughs> Never had one. Mm. No? Fun. Shout out to our boy, Jamin. Talking, like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Bark? Like, you're just sitting on your phone. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be winning seats for the people. I for tried. the people of the pod. Jamin fucked me. <laughs> He called with a hand that's supposed to fold. I texted him and I said, I know you don't care, but uh, your hand's a pure fold for chips and it's even worse with uh, it being a satellite. <laughs> were, you, were you trying to help him or were you just Both. like letting him Both. know? Both. Oh, that's, it was yeah. cathartic for me. I wonder, and, yeah, uh, I think it was. I wanted I think, to help my friend. I think 90% cathartic for you and then maybe 10%. Well, I think it was more like, like 100% he, cathartic. <laughs> The thing uh, is, is that he knows better now, and I still don't think he cares. Mm -hmm. I don't think Berkey was just like, mm, he really makes a mis he makes a mistake there. I, I better really just let him know so he doesn't. Make no, that's a why I said uh, I was streaming. I go, hmm, I don't think that hand's a call. There. James, at home, like I didn't make a mistake. That's, that's I, I got to see. Call. It's really annoying too when my hands a pure shove and his hands a pure fold, and he has me dominated. Yeah, it was like a twelve big blind jam with Queen Ten, and he had Queen Jack. Eight big blind jam with Queen Ten. He called with Queen Jack. Mm. Rough, rough, rough times yeah. for you, my man. Actually, it's been rough times for us all around here. Mm. Speaking of the weekend, Warrior. Mm. Didn't go too well, man. It mm. didn't go too well. Did we all get wrecked? <clears throat> Conrad, I think, uh, at least pushed. I mean, <laughs> at least pushed. We got this graphic Steelers here. were off. I'm good. Yep, it's true. Berkey did not have a play in. Bro, yeah. Steelers are going to go 7-2 down the fucking stretch. I'm mm -hmm. calling it right now. I hope you're right. Your hopium is so high. Not hopium. Look, uh, as uh, here's what here's what nobody understands. They had the toughest fucking schedule in the NFL for mm -hmm. the first half of the season, mm -hmm. and I knew that. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, in my head, I had myself convinced that the back half of their schedule was also super tough. Mm -hmm. They only played fucking one team with a winning record. And in let's Baltimore. not forget that one of the best players in the NFL is coming, coming back. This is baby. this is all I'm seeing. Coming right back, now. baby. Mm -hmm. What and what are you guys talking it's about? We got, we got TJ help. Watt coming Can back this week. Can you guys please keep it down because there's only one thing that should be said on this podcast today and that is J E T S Jets. Jets. <laughs> Jets! Wow, the Jets! What they in the didn't... fuck is going on? I they thought beat you the said Bills. it was a bye week for the Bills, and you're gonna chalk it up mm -hmm. as an L, move on, no one cares about it, but now you're back. I mean, you know, I have to congratulate my squad when they do things. Like, the defense, I knew they were real. I knew they were real. But if Zach Wilson cannot make, like, play a game with no turnovers, and, you know, just win. Just win. The Jets are a Super Bowl contender. Well, you know, that, we that, went that's from not, not, good, that's not, I mean, two weeks ago on this game. podcast, I said the Jets are a quarterback away from being in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. All right. He's like about to be Alex Smith in the league. He's see, about to get us there. See, when we talk about hopium. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that I mean, this motherfucker just interrupted hopium. a very, a very high level. <laughs> Steelers are about to go seven and two. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, and it wasn't like as if we weren't going to get to the Jets anyway. He like, can't help it. He, he just can't help it. And then not only did he interrupt host, it, you know, not just... only did he interrupt it, but he has nothing to say except for the fucking Jets chant. Yeah. So it's like, now here we are. Okay, so the Jets are going to do what? They are going to gonna do what? They They're going to finish third in the East? Whoa, 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 whoa. They're going to the Super Bowl. They're not making the playoffs. Are they? They're, gonna be They're not the making the playoffs? I don't know, man. Cool, 100 bucks. Oh, here we go. Here Conrad we go. is down bad bets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, put it on the tab. I'm still waiting to get paid for the fucking Levy and Bell bet from 2019. <laughs> no, you definitely got paid from that. <laughs> Did I? 100%. Uh, get the fuck out uh, of here. I wasn't around in 2019. I can't confirm nor deny. Uh, you weren't born yet? I was, basically, yeah. <laughs> still a child. So uh, we didn't do too good this week. Listen, I need to uh, make a public apology to uh, Corey Padgett. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I really went against his, uh, his squad in the Lions. I, I just, you know, I didn't realize. Trap game. Everybody can see the trap game the coming Packers a mile away. The Packers 
stink. They, they stink. I mean, they suck. Stink. They stink. Put it in the chat. Put the stink emoji in there. <laughs> they they stink. stink. P Holy stinks. moly, yeah. they stink. S T I N K stink. Look, man. That's it. You, as a Steeler fan, should recognize a fucking trap game. When ah, you see I one. know. I, that Bills game was a trap game. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That wow. was a trap game. Was, that was a trap game. Was the Chiefs but, game a trap game? Oh God, Almost. Play the no, nah, the Titans game. are good. The Titans, Titans, are Titans good. have a good you, defense. And, the Titans yeah. are good, and the Chiefs yeah. are not the Chiefs of old. Yeah, yeah the Titans were the best. Chiefs, are, Chiefs got, are still really. really I got good. yeah, they're so really good, but they're, when I, the Bills are better. I saw Chiefs minus twelve and a half when I took it. And then it went from Chiefs minus 12 and a half to Chiefs minus 14 before the game started. Because of the quarterback. And I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. I knew oh, something. Oh, Tannehill didn't play? Tannehill didn't play. Okay, yeah, that makes it more of a trap game. Yeah, yeah. Definitely way uh, more I mean, right. the thing is, like... Derrick Henry played, though. That's the yeah. thing. Derrick Henry is a goddamn animal. He's when he beast. rushes the ball, that takes time off the clock. And when you control the ball, you can win the game. Well, I got... It sounds, like, it sounds like we have the, the best sports analyst I've ever heard yeah, in my life. Let, let me go ahead and poo-poo that real quick. The Steelers <laughs> have a fucking uh, greater time of possession than their opponents by, like, one and a half to one this season. They're two and seven. Yeah, well, you gotta score. finish. You gotta finish. Yeah, if you finish, if you're... Derrick Henry finishes every fucking time. He's fucking walking out with two, three touchdowns a game. He's not That's not why the Steelers have a greater time of possession. It's because they're throwing so many goddamn picks. <laughs> they're going the other fucking way for six. You got to finish. You got to finish. Uh, I mean, that's... Rapa, you're an MMA specialist. You got to speak for yourself. What's going on here? I don't know about specialist, but I, I thought I'd pad my record and pick somebody who was a two-to-one favorite. Um, that, don't work. that doesn't work in the MMA. Yeah, that, that didn't work out so good. But in other news, and this is much better news, none of that matters. And the reason is because tomorrow, I'm going to have $620 million. Oh, oh my shit. Everybody, everybody, Wait, listen, hold on a second. Everybody, on Twitter's, given, all the everybody on Twitter's given money to Sean D for like, I, mean, I think he's up to like 50K in tickets. You guys are just wasting your money. Yeah, I wonder how much <laughs> it's, it's over. So, he already has so, a winning ticket. So the new weekend warrior has become the weekday warrior where it's infinite to one odds that you're going to win this one. It's over it's all mine and i did the math um after i pay taxes and everything and i give away 120 million dollars to friends and family i can spend 18 grand every single day for the rest of my life if i live to be 105 years old <laughs> fucking based but you just, okay okay ready? Not, that is you know what, amazing. fucking fucking let, let's play this out what will you do day one of being able to spend eighteen thousand dollars it's called spearmint rhino <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, oh, also, I'm bringing man. caviar filled empanadas to the pod. <laughs> wow. I'm throwing away all the protein shakes and it's now going to be crystal. Nice. Uh, <laughs> shit's going to be popping. Wow, we're going to have the oh, best man. studio of all time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, Berkey, Berkey escaped one last week. Still didn't play. He wasn't here. He didn't make a pick. Escaped one. They're about to go seven and two down the fucking stretch. <laughs> Wait, who's the two they're going to lose? Oh, my God. They, the, well, they're going to they're gonna lose a trap game for sure. Yeah. And they're going to lose the Ravens once. Okay, that makes sense. For sure, they're going to lose. They're You're saying they're the going to beat the? They're going to beat the Bengals? Yeah. Okay. Does yeah. That, the Bengals stink, Wait a minute. Bro. Wait a minute. Well, Does that Joe mean Mixon doesn't stink? No, but they stink. Oh, holy. Does that I mean that they're going to make the playoffs if they go seven and two? It's possible. They would be. They would finish nine and eight. Okay, he, he can't so, even say this with a straight face. He's like smiling behind it. So your hopes? <laughs> Last year they went eight eight one. Man, I don't know. Things so, fucking happen. So your hopes are that they win the vast majority of their games and then maybe might make the playoffs. Don't care if they make the playoffs. I care that they are about to expose how tough their schedule was the first half of the season with their playmaker fucking out. And now we're going to see Kenny goddamn Pickett take over the league. Okay, he's going to win rookie of the year. The Steelers are going to go 7-2. and Rookie two. of the what? Well, sorry, you're right. You're right. I apologize. George Pickens is going to win rookie of the year. I, I don't know if you guys see, saw Aiden Hutchinson, but... um. <laughs> We're only nine games in, buddy. We got the rest of the fucking season. Okay, he's, he's got George goddamn Pickens to contend with. He got Kenny Pickett coming out slinging three fifty a game against these down bad fucking teams. They put they everybody stinks that they play. So you're saying this is the calm before the storm? For yeah, the that's right. Steelers. I feel in a very awkward that's position right. as being a, a fellow Yinzer here. And he's saying this outlandish <laughs> shit. I have to just get on board with it. You hear yeah, the, you gotta you the copium too. <laughs> you really have to back him. Listen, sitting there. I like, have to. Yeah. Listen to this down Seven the stretch two. schedule. Let's fucking go. Listen to this down the stretch schedule. They got the fucking down bad Saints. This team absolutely stinks. They do. Andy Dalton hasn't won in Pittsburgh in fucking 15 years. And he's not going to. He's not going to now. 
Then they got the down bad Bengals. Andy <laughs> Dalton's down bad Bengals. The they DVD are, game. man. They're fucking. They're trash. They're gonna accidentally back their way into a playoff they spot. They lost to Cleveland. Mixon they, put they up five. Robbed. Mixon we put up five fucking touchdowns. Yeah, who'd they play? Atlanta. No, no, no. It was somebody bad. No, Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're was bad. It? Yeah. It, 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 was a, it was a B squad team mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, Man, sure. thank you, Joe. Wait, Mixon, can you keep though. going? I love this. Matt speaks his okay. facts, and then Brian just sits there like, yep. Okay, that's so, right. so they got the Bengals in Pittsburgh on prime time, coming off off a big victory over the Saints okay. and, and burying fucking Andy Dalton. Then they get Andy Dalton's former team the next week in prime time. They're going to do what they did to them week one, fucking send them to the can. Then they get the down bad Colts. Now, this is. This is the trap game I fear. Yeah. Okay. Fucking the Colts are fucking tragic. Mm -hmm. the, the Colts are better. Or, or sorry. The and the Colts Steelers are, just win two in a row. So they're all high and mighty. Exactly. And they think, oh, okay, yeah, okay. We're just going to just gonna roll the rest yeah, of the Yeah, they played some through. mediocre competition mm -hmm. that they got up for at yeah. home. Mm -hmm. Now they got to go to Indy. Yeah. And they got to play this fucking trap game yep. against these stink fest yep. Colts that are in the basement of the South. They're worse than the fucking Jags. And uh, I'm, I'm scared. This one's going to go into OT. <laughs> this actually might end up in a fucking tie. This guy's done a lot of... We may end up 8-8-1 eight, eight, and one yeah. due to the Colts yeah, trap game, okay? Like, then we get... like them tying the Lions So instead of work, exactly. watching the game this week because you guys were off, you literally looked at their schedule and went through every single scenario Bro, to look, figure out how you to win, this. right? They have the Falcons, <laughs> the Panthers, the Raiders, the Browns. And the Ravens twice. They really have the softest schedule. It's man. the softest back end schedule of all time. Like, and I'm here to tell I didn't you, man, how how soft it actually was. You might uh, be right. They might might make us. Oh my god, they're, they're going to win five or six. You're convincing uh, your friend. No, the the, the schedule, schedule was convincing me. Yeah, they're, the they're going to win. Was. They're going to win a minimum of five games on the back half. <laughs> they might win seven. He's actually convincing me. Yeah, that's a really, really, really bad schedule. And I, I don't think Pittsburgh is good by any stretch, but if they play football, they could just win. Here's the thing. Pittsburgh is not a playoff. Let me rephrase. Pittsburgh is not a division winning team, but they're not as bad as their first half start would indicate. They played a ridiculously tough schedule. Can we go back and see who they've played so far? Yeah. Just for my own personal Oh, yeah, I'm happy to tell you, Please. Andy. I think the Falcons are actually decent. They played the Bengals. Okay. Uh, uh, let, me, let me name you the teams that they played with a losing record. Okay. We're good? <laughs> We're good. No one. Wow. They played all division leaders and teams in second place. They played the Bengals, the Patriots, the Browns, the Jets, the Bills, the Bucks. The Dolphins, the Eagles. The Bucks have a losing record. No, no, yeah, they, they they're four, they four and four. Yesterday. They're four and four. Oh, four, yeah. four now. Yo, talk wow. about fucking down bad fucking game. The Bucks and the Rams. I was just like, I don't even want either one of them to win. They don't deserve it. How I is, think. I think if the Steelers go seven and two, Landon needs to take a towel photo, but only a terrible towel. Oh, a terrible towel photo. Dude, I'll be so <laughs> like fucking this. shredded by that. There you go. I'll just do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, terrible towel uh, is about this long. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I know. My daddy sewed a Steelers bar. Uh, We've right. talked about that's this. That's right. Um, but we do have to have the the only the only friends towel calendar shoot for 2023. I call dibs on December. I'll wear the terrible towel. Yeah. <laughs> you can represent your home country. It'll Ryan, be, be I more have like a graphic a sock for me. of what you've done this weekend. You had a great weekend. I did. You had a great weekend. What did you do this weekend? I don't know. What did I do? Oh, well, no. We're about to find out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> we're no. about to... That's not you. I got shredded. Thank you, Fred. That's unbelievable. What kind of Florida man <laughs> bullshit is this? <laughs> he, he jumped in, grabbed me. Yeah. And then I opened the can of beer. He for needed him. some help. You hey, helped him out. I That's some Florida out. man shit. That yeah. is, where did you find that? TikTok, I just saw honestly. I just saw it on Twitter. Well, not, not Twitter, like yeah, yeah, not TikTok. I just saw it on Twitter. I was like, wow, you had a great weekend. <laughs> That's out here helping out the boys. Hey, I gotta do what I gotta do, you know? Yeah. Steelers were on a buy, didn't anything else better to do. Fuck. <laughs> Just yeah. so happened that the Steelers were on a buy same time that I scheduled for a pickleball tournament. I would never play a Sunday tournament no. otherwise. Right. I end up fucking playing Hold this. on, hold on. Did you even play this tournament? I played this tournament. <laughs> well, it, you were there. I played I mean, most of it. Go up and roll that shit. <laughs> Uh, Alright, Brooke, you're ready, huh? You're ready to go. 
we go. All right. Here it comes right back to you, Burke. And oh, wait. Let's fucking go. go. <laughs> Do anything. Yeah, the move. <laughs> Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Your partner. My favorite part is that you actually looked at the camera like. That's because Tammy and Leon were there. They knew. <laughs> <laughs> they knew. <laughs> yeah. he, he was all like in position, you know, he's all ready for the ball to come back to him. And then the guy just jumps in front of him and his arms go. When your teammate <laughs> hits the ball, you're supposed to run to the no, forward I quit. line. I quit. I quit on that. <laughs> can, we see, can we see that one more time? Yeah. I, I gave you a more zoomed in. Look how excited he was. was. He's just like, <laughs> I'm really excited. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no. We're losing go. 10 to 4 at that point. Just in case you were wondering, we're losing 10 to 4. Uh, the team we were losing to. We were gonna see again in the gold medal match. Okay. Uh, so you know, if ever there's a time to switch it up a little, maybe adjust the strategy, try some things. Now might be a good time to work on it. Nah, Justin wasn't having it. He Is was, this your partner all the time? Yeah, I love him to death, but he's the fucking worst. Why? <laughs> Why did he just jump in front of you like that? Because he, sometimes you get in the zone. No, 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 no. That's that's. Did you do that every time? Every time. Do you literally? Do there you were a dozen play? balls that I literally said I go, and he goes no. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's a pretty good player. Uh, he's good. Yeah. He's. I mean, we're both like three five. You know, like there we we both have different sets of skills. Um, he's, can, you ex can you explain what that means, the, the ranking? Because yeah. I, I heard it on stream last night, but I still wasn't sure. Yeah, it's very similar. So tennis has a similar ranking system. So when you're a beginner, you're basically unranked. Um, uh, I guess that maybe they've expanded the rankings now to like 2.5, uh, which wasn't really a thing before. But uh, basically, like when you're a beginner, you, you're just learning all the ground strokes. You're either unranked or 2.5. As you get to the point where you can start to strategically take shots, um, uh, I'll refer to them later, whatever, you get to like the 3-0 level, and then you incrementally improve and move, up, move through the rankings until you get to the pro level. So it's 3-0, 3-5, 4-0, 4-5, 5-0, -5, and then pro. Uh, and tennis has a very similar ranking system. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, I guess they have like 1-0 so now. 1-0 to 2-0. So 1-0 to 2-0 so would just be like, you know, the rules. Beginner. I was, okay. yeah, like you would be 1-0. Yeah. Um, and then like Landon would be like 3-0. Conrad would be like 2-5. Uh, no, he'd be 3-0. No, he wouldn't. Yes, he I can't would. think. Who? You. You're out of your mind. Yeah, Conrad's like 2-5. You're out of your mind. He's like 2-5. Uh, nah, I, I, I would bet. It's hard to be, it's hard to be above, it's hard to be 3-0 plus if you've played like less than 100 hours. No, where, I, would, where, I would bet, I would honestly bet doubles that Conrad and like if Conrad and I played doubles, we would have a winning record in a 3 in a 3 pickleball tournament. Oh, I would bet that. You bet against that? Yeah. Hmm. Conrad? Let's, it's, it's, let's, let's clean up and, this money. <laughs> and the, the thing is, uh, I would bet against it, not because you two aren't better athletes and aren't better at pickleball than your competition, but tournaments is all about execution and efficiency, and you two are just way too erratic. Name me your price, sir. I mean, whatever you want. What, one to one? Yeah. Okay, 500 at 1 to 1. Okay. Next pickleball tournament is when? Uh, there's one this weekend, but I think it's too late for you guys to register. Okay, that's good. Next. Okay, that's <laughs> good. good. We need more time. <laughs> okay, where, no, where? you don't get to fucking practice. Well, you just well, said we could register, so. <laughs> the, next, the next tournament that we can both I'm betting on you two currently right this very second. Yeah, I mean, the next tournament we can functionally play in Vegas, we're in. Okay. 500 at 1 to 1. Okay. Just between me and you. Conrad is. I'll be in the 3 0 bracket as well. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, That's you, an easy win for us. Look yeah. at you. You're like Dara from fucking MTV. It's, it's, Look at the volleyball. You mean just me and Connor versus Justin? <laughs> so how long? How long? How long does it take to jump? Like to go from three zero to three five, or three five to, to four? Uh, I mean, it's getting, like if you're three five, it's gonna matter. It's gonna be very different. So if you have a tennis background, you'll start like probably three zero, maybe three five yeah, naturally, because yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. you're gonna transition a lot better. Right. If you don't have those types of ground strokes, like I have no ground strokes. So it took me forever to, to improve. Um, but yeah, I would say like the learning curve between like 3.0 and 4.5 is relatively steep. And then from like 4.5 and beyond, it's just about refinement, right? Mm -hmm. Like just getting really good at all of the, the, the so shots. If you played someone who was like a 4.5, would they just crush you, beat you all the time? The team that we were losing to, the, they were sandbagging. Oh, They're both probably... 
between four oh four five. What did you guys play in three five? Three five, but we were kind of we were sandbagging too. So like, is that just to play a worse competition, or why? Why would you sand? So I I don't know. We did it because it was uh it was a. Uh, I don't think it's PPA any longer. So uh, there are a bunch of associations. But anyway, this one's World Pickleball Tour, which ironically they use WPT as their, as their <laughs> moniker. Um, <clears throat> so it was a sanctioned event and it was supposed to be prize money to uh, the winners of each division. It's small. It's very small. But you have to understand that uh, in this sport, because it's so new, any amount of money is massive to people. Right. So like, it was like $175 to the winner. In our in our division, which we don't care, we paid a hundred bucks to play. Like yeah. we literally don't care. Yeah. But whenever there's prize money on the line, you expect everybody to play down. So if you're so like Makes for sense. Justin and I, we've won a three five tournament before. Mm -hmm. So the lowest we can play is three five. <laughs> oh, okay. um, and we just assumed that everybody would play down due to the monetary aspect of it mm -hmm. but it turned out that that was the exact opposite and to be true like we this is our fourth tournament together of all the three five events we played this was the softest one by far yeah. with the exception of that team <laughs> i don't know how they were three five maybe it was the first time they've ever played a sanctioned tournament yeah. so they just got to rank themselves mm -hmm. but uh i if i had to personally if i had to assess their ability i would say their one player who was stronger was a, probably a four five and the other player who was weaker was probably a 4-0. That's so crazy because isn't the first place prize just getting your money back? Plus more. Plus, plus like, it's like double your money, basically. Yeah. They it's won. so small. I'm guessing they won. Yeah, they won. Yeah. But <laughs> so what ended up happening... Congratulations. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> it's weird. It's, well, it's weird because uh, I felt it necessary in the moment. And I stand by it, but uh, I'm not really happy with the way I handled it. But Justin and I have been playing together for a while, and he's a goddamn psychopath. Like, <laughs> he is the definition of, of, of mentally soft. And I don't mean that in the way of... Uh, is he watching? Probably. <laughs> he's, def he's definitely watching, but Justin has broken at least... I've, ten he, rackets. He has thrown his paddle away at the end of every tournament that we've played. <laughs> yeah, like ten <laughs> rackets at the bare minimum. Okay, and and he'll be the He's first. He's got to win the tournaments to pay for his <laughs> Right, he'll be the first to admit that like what I'm saying is is true. Uh, I, I don't uh, mean mentally soft in the in the means of like uh, he he can't like challenge himself. I mean in the way of like uh, it's easy to get under his skin. Right, like he just tilts so easily. Right, emotionally. Right? Uh, so. We're playing this team, and it's very clear out the gate that they're sandbagging, and we're fucked. We're just outclassed. And the, the big thing about pickleball is that, like, as you get better, uh, the strategy kind of blossoms. Like, you just have way more available to you as you develop more and more shots. And when he and I first started playing together, I didn't have the whole repertoire of shots, not even close, right? Uh, I would take them all because I, I kind of work in the inverse. Like, I understand the strategy, or at least I, I think I do, uh, like as if I were a 5 -0 player, but I'm not capable of 5 -0 shots. Right. So like I'll see things happening on the court where I'm like, oh, like this is the shot to take here, but I can't execute it. It's not even close. So <clears throat> I, I kind of see the game differently than how I can actually play the game. And when we first started playing together, it was very, very restricted in what I could do because wow. I was erratic with my drives. So basically like, um, you number the shots based off of whether you're serving or defending, right? So if you're mm -hmm. serving, that's shot one. If you're returning, that's second shot. And then now, um, as the original serving team, the next one you're going to take is the third shot. And the third shot's like the most important shot of the game because it sets up the rally, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So there are two shots you can take off third shot. It's a drive or a drop. Drives are, you just hit a tennis stroke like that mm -hmm. off the baseline. And it drops, you're trying to drop it down in front of You're them. trying to put it into the kitchen yeah. and start the soft game, mm -hmm. right? So you want to rush right. the net off of drop and then start the soft game. So Justin got very good at the third shots and we had devised a strategy where he would take all third shots and I would just work on rushing the net. Well, over the last like six months, I got way fucking better. Like, I just started to develop a lot more shots. That's true, can confirm. Because uh, that strategy functioned for us at 3-0, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really work all that well once you start to level up because now he's facilitating all of the... All, like, he's dictating the pace and getting us to the net and everything. Um, but then once we arrive there, 
he's now out of position often mm -hmm. and he has to facilitate the rally from there moving forward right. and it's like well that means he has to be like a, a level above the level we're actually playing when it comes to uh rally shots right so he needs to be capable of playing like four or five dinks uh in order to execute the strategy because basically he's playing 80 plus percent of the court at all times <clears throat> and he's just not like he's just you know it, it's not an insult to him he's just not a four five five oh uh player in any one particular shot right and i'm not either right so what you have to do then is we both have to develop together right and once we get to the net it needs to be this thing where we're kind of dividing the court and like okay he's a little stronger at, at the soft game and i'm a lot stronger at the fast game so he should be taking like maybe 60% of the drop shots and uh, executing dinks to set me up. And I should be taking like 60 to 70% of the overhands and uh, the, the, the forehands and things like that, right? But it, it's very difficult to split that way because oftentimes when you're facilitating like the passing back and forth, you're doing it to set yourself up. And what ends up happening is he just gets this fixated mindset of like, I'm taking 80% of the court. And when we're losing, it turns into I'm taking 100% of the court. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah, yeah and it just like saw. plays me right off yeah. of the right off of the, the court. And it's like mm -hmm. when we're clearly in a match that we're going to lose anyway, and we're going to have to play them again, it only makes sense to like say, uh, so uh, to give you, for instance, like we were taking nothing but third shot drops off the, off the rip. And they just jumped out to a 6-0 lead. Like, they're just way better than us at the soft game. It's abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, like, we have to attack them. Like, that's the only way we're going to stand a shot. He's like, yeah, yeah, I agree. And then you saw what he did. He starts cutting in front of me and driving. And it's like, <laughs> bro, that's like the only shot I have. <laughs> it's interesting when you say, like, there's a parallel here between the having the ability to think about what the right thing to do is and not being able to actually do it. Because we have this conversation about poker stuff all the time, yeah. where if you think or have the idea of what to do, but some people are they call it the theorists or whatever, but actually can't implement in game. Whereas in a practice environment, you can think about it, look at a sim, see the answer. Yeah. But then you practically just just falter, right? And it's different in the sense of with pickleball, it's an athletic sport. So if you think in real time, okay, I have to drop here, but you also have to now coordinate that with athletic ability. Where in poker, you now have to have like the mental capacity as well as follow through. But the mental part before the action is what gets jumbled. Where in pickleball, it's the inverse. Well, in both, you have to be able to, you have to have foresight, right? You have to be able to see many, many moves ahead. Um, and That was clean. Yeah, it was really good. It, I, it, that, that's the thing is that like when you start to play and watch enough, the game starts to open up to you in a way where you uh, anticipate the return shots and the defense and things like that and like um right. I, I would feel like i would be a better pickleball coach than a pickleball player mm. because i'm just not good enough yet uh and i might not ever get to be wow. good enough these guys to you, be able to do this that's kind of right crazy. because in poker they're it's so the same close thing. to each other and they're just like hitting the ball you'd be so shocked so why, it's you'd be whippable. shocked yeah, yeah. It, like it's no i i know i i know but it's just it's just amazing how close they are and they're able to just because like hit the, ball the better you get uh, at anything because i didn't i just didn't realize it in the sense of like with poker i actually you anticipate these things yeah like you see flops turns rivers yeah, you yeah. think about the bet sizes you think about getting check raises. it's the exact same thing from a pickleball perspective of okay i put the ball here he's 80 x percent of the time the ball is going to come back this way Correct. and here's how i adapt and respond the irony is that so i play with landon a little bit not not a ton but when i get him out there um you know we play together uh his ceiling is uncapped but uh your ability to think about the game is zero yeah like you absolutely apply zero strategy when you're out there you try to react and the shots that you take are all disincentivized it's true i'm super reactive i just take a bunch of pre-workout jump rope and then play like i have my head cut off <laughs> and, yeah. and it's just really really yeah. like he's he's naturally built for the sport 10x more than i am and I can pick him apart. Uh, obviously, like, I'm better, too, because I've played a lot more. But, like, naturally speaking, he has the strokes. Like, he has the ground strokes uh, to, to just, like, be a lot better. That's why I said, like, both of them would, would lose at 3-0. 
Because when you're playing against people who are routinely playing over and over and over and over again, they're just going to execute. Yeah. And like, they're just going to realize Landon doesn't have a backhand. Yeah. And they're just going to win points by just dinking to his fucking backhand. That's like not a thing. You don't <laughs> win points by dinking, right? You win points by generating mistakes. Mm -hmm. But at the 3 0, 3 5 level, people are so bad that you can literally pass them the fucking ball and expect it to not come back. Brian, yeah. Brian, I tell you this with 100%. Uh, 100% truth. No, that you, you can't call me a liar. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so one day Matt just looks at me and goes, listen, man, you're dropping everything else. You're going to be a pro pickleball player. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. I'm telling you, man, yeah. he's built for it. Like, when you watch yeah. those clips, like Guapo put up, the the best guys out on the tour are like six four, six five. They just have this crazy wingspan, mm -hmm. uh, and especially like when you're playing mixed. So the yeah, way Justin it makes uh, sense, like. That's such a good shot. Yeah, the taller and the lanky, lengthy. Well, lengthy so I, ironically, Ben Johns isn't very tall. Uh, I think he's like six foot. So he's kind of built a lot more like I am. Um, and to be fair, like I do have a long wingspan compared to my actual height, uh, and you just get to like, you know, really work the net. But he 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 has a tennis background. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he might have played collegiate tennis at, at Maryland. Yeah. But whenever you get into like doubles, especially like mixed doubles, they play a strategy similar to like Justin and I, where the guy takes about eighty percent of the court. But those guys tend to be like six four. They have a wingspan that takes up you know nearly the entirety of the court. Yeah. Um, and they're able to just kind of like put their partner in a in like a winning position where they're handling pretty much everything from their own uh, sideline to like three quarters of the way over. And what it allows them to do is set their partner up in a way where their partner can play slightly off the net because they don't have to worry about the passing game, right? They don't they don't need to worry about um, anything uh, offensive really. So it sets them up to be a little bit off the net and they can now deflect shots that get attacked onto them. Or if they get a setup, now they have that extra beat to kind of put balls away. And that worked for Justin and I for a while, but I'm the more aggressive one whenever it comes to putaways, right? And he's the, he's the more finesse one. So it just like doesn't work out as we continue to blossom our skills. Like I need to be able to facilitate a lot of the offense myself. Uh, anyway, all of this just like led to tremendous frustration. But what really ultimately was the 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 straw that broke the camel's back is Justin gets like so enraged <laughs> while playing. So like we 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 were playing our earlier matches. We swept uh, everybody that, that we played prior to the, to the team that won gold. Um, and like we we're playing this shit squad early in the day. And uh, we're smashing them. We're winning like, I don't know, nine to two or something like that. It's our first match of the day. And uh, I, I, hit a, I hit like a lob. And the kid on the other team, he's kind of shorter, maybe like 5'8 or whatever. He jumps and uh, puts it away. I mean, he jumped like three inches off the ground. Yeah. And so one of their friends was like watching and he was like, yeah, way to go. Like, way to, way to get up for it or something like that. And the kid even made light of it himself and goes like, yeah, when I get like three inches off the ground. And in the process of that, Justin hears somebody on the sideline chirping. He goes, okay, oh, okay, God. it's like that. Oh, I'm God. like, bro, like these guys stink, man. Like we can't. Yeah, just let them have their, their moment. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know, like having been an athlete my entire life, like there is a time and a place for shit talk. Right. And uh, there's a way to do it, but... Pickleball is like such a golf-like sport. Yeah, it, it it seems funny to like get enraged like that at, at a pickleball match. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you only get mad at yourself. That's why you end up breaking. When, shit. when you watch the pro level, there is some trash talking back and forth, yeah. but it's because it's a it's a pool of like twenty people, mm -hmm. right? So like when we play rec, we play with the same people every single day, five days a week. Like there are some guys that like I'll talk shit to. But it's in a. It, it's never. It's not the way he does it. Like when we were losing to the to the team that won gold, uh, there was a point where they they got a point on on Justin's uh, backhand side, and they go got him, and he goes, "Oh, you got him, huh? You got him!" And he's just like, he's just so mad. So then we get mopped off the court, and as we're like walking off, like I'm telling them good game or whatever, and he's like almost refusing to go up to to so you don't shake hands, you like tap paddles or whatever. Yeah. He's like slow to even go up and do it and then he's like play me in a real sport and i'm just like 
what the f- you're five seven <laughs> like what is going on like, right now fight them like you're not gonna fight yeah, like, them th- these guys these guys are like samoans they're, they're like 280 <laughs> pounds each like what the fuck is happening right now so i like, walk off the court and and i mean this is this has been consistent in all of the tournaments that we play like he always ends up in this mode somehow and it probably has to do with the fact that we lose <laughs> so so like what ends up becoming clear What's happening is once we lose this match, we go into the loser's bracket, which is now a medal round. And if we lose that game, we get bronze. If we win, we get a minimum of silver, but we're going to play this team again for gold. And you get like $100, right? Well, if you win the whole thing. (laughs) There's no second place money. So um, I'm like so frustrated that I'm just like, you know what? Enough's enough. Like this is the time that I'm just going to say like, I don't like we're never beating this team in gold. And I don't want to do this anymore. I was like, I'm going home. But I'm not happy with the way I handled it. Because I should have just like found Justin and been like, hey, man, like you're embarrassing me with this, with this nonsense. Yeah. Like This team's better than us. You know they're better than us. I know they're better than us. They're going to win gold. Like We shouldn't be handling it this way. And uh, I'm annoyed not getting to take any of the balls. But instead, I was just like, I'm too pissed to have a conversation right now. Like I don't want to have an adult conversation. I'm just... I'm just gonna take go. your ball and go home. Well, it's it's a you fucking. He didn't take the ball. He just take the ball. It's it, a three. Just wouldn't five. let him have the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's a three-five tournament, man. It's like it would be like uh, I don't even know what to possibly compare it to. Uh, there's no poker equivalent because you just play until you lose. You would never just leave a tournament. No, I would though. It, yeah, it'd be like playing a down bad at fucking the Orleans, like an Orleans 200 daily, mm. where. Uh, <laughs> yeah where it's like some sort of structure where it's like uh, a double elimination shootout and you lose heads up to like fucking cousin's uncle <laughs> from, from down the block you know and now you're in the loser's bracket and it's just like I'm not doing this you see what you should have done with that hand was right. you see what you should have done right it's like yeah I'm not doing this but I really do realize that uh, I'm terrible at pickleball like <laughs> Watching just that, there. Just we're just like watching that match. Like, I don't know, man. There's just so much room to get better. Yeah, and I hate tournaments. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before the max talks positivity comes in, it's a good thing to be able to see where you're making mistakes. Landon, I'm strategizing. Are you lefty already? I'm right-handed. All right, cool. No, it's not. It's not making mistakes. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm bad because I'm making mistakes. I think I'm bad because. Uh, I don't think I have the ability to get to like a high level. What does that mean? He's already at a ceiling, basically. Like he can only get so much more better. I'm not at my ceiling. Very close. But, uh, <laughs> bro, I will ch- I will make a lifelong bet me versus you in pickleball. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you just you don't have it, buddy. I'm sorry. What? Wow. You, you just wow. don't fucking you have it. out of your fucking like, mind. I you- come out and I play like every once every six months or something like that. If I wanted to play, there's no chance that you're better than me. You're tragic out there. I love this. Oh my God. You're absolutely tragic. I think you think that because. Now I think I have to start playing every day. Please. Just to fucking please, absolutely wipe means. the floors with Dude, you. Here's the thing with Conrad. <laughs> like when we were all completely incompetent at pickleball and we had no idea I what we were doing. I haven't played since. You're right. You're incompetent then. You're incompetent now. You're <laughs> out of your fucking mind. I, I see you, man. You, you come out. You see absolutely nothing. You're, you're just <laughs> mad because you're like, your ceiling is here. You're already, you're like here. Conrad you're touching thinks, it with your head. You're like. Conrad's of the impression <laughs> that like being able to run around like a chicken with their head cut off and put a paddle on like the Like Landon ball, does. No. No. Landon doesn't like run around on the court. He just chooses poor shots. Like Conrad's of the impression that like constantly being out of position in a game and being able to be fast enough to like make up for that and get a paddle on a ball to take a really bad shot makes him potentially good at pickleball. No, I know what the shots I need to take. I just go for those shots because I like to have fun. I don't know what that But means. anyway, if I tried, you have no shot. Like, I would love for you to try. All right, cool. That's what we'll spite do. Spite is a powerful motivator. It's, I, it's going to be a beautiful thing. He's, he's making me spiteful because I'm so certain. I'm, I'm so glad I mean, that you're both filled with spite right now. Like, great. Landon is the one with the high ceiling in pickleball, not Hi you. Guys, how What's you doing? Sure, me, we'll pickleball. Only because he's tall. I love pickleball. Not only because he's tall. <laughs> it's, it's because he already has really good ground strokes. He has the ability to generate a lot of power. And he's very long. You hear that? I'm a strong guy tall. now. 
Strong man. Yeah. Strong. Look at that. Sounds like a pickleball emote is coming soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We actually need a couple of those. We need an empanada emote. We need a pickleball emote. And Do we have a down bad emote? What the fuck is an empanada? <laughs> Don't we're stop, not going down stop that it right again. now. No more. We have okay, so I'll make a taco emote. <laughs> stop. Wait. Bro. No. Do we have a down bad emote? No, we need one of those two. We need too. a down bad emote. Mm. We definitely don't need a down bad emote. Yeah, you do. You're the only person who says down bad. You literally said it today. Yeah, you definitely you, said you it two times today. Down bad <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was mocking you. Yeah, you are the down you, bad Look angle. at you. You're literally smiling as you say this. I was mocking you. But you're having fun. I, I am having fun. That's the point. What did I say last night? Oh, that's right. We we can't reveal that on air. That That's going to be a surprise. No. <laughs> I'm excited for it, though. I'm so excited for it. I like surprises. Listen, okay, so yesterday, we wait, is it, I can't talk about it? No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Right. Anyway, just that. know that I'm happy that Matt was as happy as he was yesterday. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm happy for you. Mm. All but right. Fuck if, you. if you guys haven't checked it out already, it's Monday. That yes. means we have another episode of Poker Out Loud. And now we have a new cast. Berg, who, who who's coming in? So we lost K Rab and Schwan for the second half of the season, and we picked up Jay Nandez and Thalo. Um, it's a it's a riveting second half. Your boy Lana gets in the mix. There's a lot of uh, very emotional imagery that we've stolen from the second half of the season. Dude, I love emotional imagery. A lot of hands on head. There's so much. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on where. Things don't exist. Hmm. But well, that's what happens when you bring in two PLO players. Yeah, but they do exist. Uh, I thought Jay Nandez played really well. Yeah, he played great. Um, they both played uh, super reasonably. It's just a matter of like getting to hear what they said during uh, the hands being played hasn't been revealed to either or like any of us yet. Right, right, right. Yeah. So understanding where the thought process and where the logic comes from is going to be a lot more revealing of like skill set than is I'm nervous the that are. Thalo just trolled the whole time. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. He I haven't did. I haven't watched today's episode did. yet. <clears throat> I don't think he did. Oh yeah, you were there. You there. you heard yeah. everything. Yeah, I heard I heard it all. The tortoise knows all. I don't remember a lot of it, but I heard it all. Sure. Something. Sure. The all-knowing tortoise. That's right. If you haven't checked out Poker Out Loud yet, it is um, eight professionals at the table. Is it eight? Six, seven. seven for this season. Seven professional seven. poker players at the table speaking their minds with headsets on while they're playing hands. Professional to be taken lightly. Yes. <laughs> professional. All right. Semi-professionals. <laughs> you just call yourself a pro and that's it. That's the only standards there are for poker pros, right? Yeah. And while you're there, go to the merch store and, uh, you know, maybe get yourself a Poker Out Loud t-shirt. Grab yourself a Poker Out Loud yeah. t-shirt. You can look fresh They're like the not. tortoise. They My have man. those, uh, they have a cutoff? Uh, you can you turn can it make, into a cutoff. You cut can make off. it a cutoff, yeah. for sure. Mm. You can make once, anything. Once it's your, once it's your t-shirt, oh, you can do whatever you, you want with it. With scissors. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to turn this into a... a a pickleball only podcast, but oh, no, we're going back to pickleball. Oh, there we go. So I, I, there we go. Off of it. Like, I was waiting to like yeah, segue off so of hard. it. I saw a but way. Like, Here we go. Steer, <laughs> uh, I'm equating it to poker out loud. Okay. Uh, That's fair enough. Pick, pickleball is massive, right? It, it's growing rapidly. Uh, LeBron, yeah. Mark Cuban, a bunch of people, they're, they're investing. Tom Brady, I believe as well. They're all investing in these leagues uh, and, and the, they see the writings on the wall, right? There, there's no NBA of pickleball yet. There's no NFL of pickleball yet. Mm -hmm. And they are on the forefront, right? Um, it's such a popular game amongst all ages that uh, strategy content is, is starting to come out, right? I'm astonished at how small the YouTube community is for pickleball. Do you want to start a, a pickleball training site? Is no. Well, I did. Now I don't. I, I don't know. So I don't know how this plans, pans out, but like Tyson McGuffrey is one of the highest level pros out there, right? Scuff okay. McGruff? <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Illinois, 60652. I do. Uh, uh, so he, he's like easily one of the most marketable pros out there uh, and is very good. Has a, of course, has he's a, a dog in a trench coat. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He had... <laughs> That's not a dad joke. That's a rad joke. What would we be without you two? <laughs> Fucking dynamic duo. Dad and rad, uh, rad and dad. Um, so he, he, started, it up. he started a YouTube channel uh, like a year, year and a half ago. He does a weekly pickleball podcast. Uh, and then he does like a monthly um, like strategy training 
series type of thing. And it's remarkably well done, right? So he puts out these training series where they take a shot, like call it the drive or the drop uh, or the overhand, something like that, right? And he does like a four-part series on it for each level. Or sorry, a three-part series for each level. So he'll have like 2-0 to 3-0, the drop. 3-5 to 4-5, the drop. And then like 5 or 4-5 plus, mm -hmm. the drop, right? And he incrementally shows you the learning phases from like beginner to intermediate to advanced. And it's insanely well done. Like 15 minute long videos, uh, highly, highly produced. Helps people not uh, develop like bad habits along yeah. the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, you know, when you're picking up a new sport and you're looking for this type of content, like this is what poker lacked in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't until the mid to late 2000s that we started to see training videos uh, come to be. Um, and same thing with like all other sports, like baseball, football, and the like. Uh, it's only recent that you can find this sort of content on YouTube. Yeah. He has 15,000 subscribers, yeah. and like each of those videos has like 4,000 views. He's one of the biggest pros in the industry. That's crazy. I don't understand at why is he all. Not, why doesn't he have, how many people actively pay pickleball now? Do we know that number? It's growing. It's, it's growing. So uh, I thought I saw... There was a recent article that was released. I, I don't know what the actual number is, but it's yeah. it's like in the tens of millions. I was going to say it has to be. So. <clears throat> okay, question. Yeah. What is the tennis YouTube community looking like when it comes to people that do tennis? Right? Good question. Like when it comes to viewership along those lines, because maybe it's one of those things where it's not like a tennis vlog, like, hey guys, I'm here to play tennis today. Like watch me play tennis. If that's even a thing or yeah. not. So if it's not yeah. a thing, why would it be now a thing for pickleball? Right, that makes sense. Right, because yeah. people watch tennis and love mm -hmm. watching tennis highlights. Right, but who wants to watch someone just go play tennis? But if there's an audience for it, maybe it's just a matter of production value and how no, to do it. No, there, there's there's certainly an audience, and for sure, without looking at the tennis, uh, I, I'm certain that they have a bigger bigger audience. Mm -hmm. um, but like to give you for an example, uh, for instance, uh, 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 for instance uh, there's a channel pickleball highlights. Yeah. And it averages like a million views per video. Exactly. Because it's just the highlights and people don't want to see everything. Yeah. Right? Uh, but then also like the PP, uh, the PPA tour will like televise their events. Yeah. So basically they don't have TV deals outside of a couple of events have been on CBS. All of them make their way to YouTube. Right. These get six figure views as well. Right. So th they'll range between like, basically they're very similar to poker content. It'll mm -hmm. be like 70,000 to a couple hundred thousand people who watch these live streams. Yeah. Um, and they do relatively well, but yeah, it's clearly in its infancy. And what I'm certain of is that it's at the floor, not the ceiling. That's a good thing though, when it comes to wanting to create something. It's a, yes, it's a good thing. Yes. Yes. There's a ton of opportunity, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird, right? Because like we see the same thing in poker mm. and you could say the same thing as an outsider looking that in poker is in its infancy. Yeah. You could, the if, content poker if, space. If, if you were an outsider, you would look and say like, oh, they haven't reached maturity yet in the space. But as an insider, we're like, this is so fucking saturated. Like there's so much stuff out there and nobody's watching. That's the same thing when it comes to new people trying to get into the gaming content on like Twitch, when it gets into streaming. Well, gaming and actually is saturated. That, okay. market, that market is very mature. So you're saying that, that that's super saturated, whereas poker isn't, but we feel like it is. Yeah, because like look at gaming. You can look at a guy like Ninja. You can look at a guy like... Um, uh, who's the guy that I like to watch? Blue hair. Ludwig. Ludwig. Yeah. You look at guys like that, and they have multiple millions of followers. Right. And multiple millions of views. So like it's very clear that that, that industry, that, that audience is relatively mature, the growth is leveling off, right? It is really interesting because that whole section is like gaming as well as content creator variety streamer brand. But that's right? what they branched off to because they reached a ceiling in gaming alone. Right, okay, right? so you're saying that he had the gaming platform and then pivoted to other things Correct. because it would then move. Correct, we're already looking into pivots and- We're not very big. No, we're so small. Yeah. So like the pivots become even smaller. Right. Right, like the gaming variety stuff is not bigger than his actual gaming. Right. You know, so that's the thing. It's like we've either agreed upon the fact that poker is so niche. It's so, but it's not. 
That's the thing. Like, what it's, do you think is bigger, pickleball, pickleball, or poker? It has to be poker. Has to be. It has to be. But how in about, my mind, it's in pickleball. Ten years, though. Well, in ten years, it might be pickleball. Yeah. Well, it depends on what happens with poker, right? Because the issue with poker now is that it's not mainstream, so to speak, right? True. Because when it was televised, like when the poker boom happened, poker well, it's not became mainstream anymore. Everywhere. Right. Yeah. And is there a way to make it mainstream again? Probably not. Online poker. And that might we, be the issue. Yeah. I think it's right? the legalization of online mm -hmm. poker to everywhere. So if that happens, then yeah, it would become but mainstream. But like pickleball is not mainstream as far not as yet. Like, yeah. Well, but that's that's kind of my point though, is mm. that uh, there is no moneymaker effect taking place on pickleball yet. Well, I can't. Let ever. me finish. Okay. Let me finish. There's no moneymaker effect taking place in pickleball, and it's booming. Mm. It's in a massive boom state. Right. Right? The effect, I guess, would have been COVID and the fact that people were looking for outdoor activity. That is what we've heard from people that we know well that play pickleball. They said they got into it throughout of COVID Of course. Time. Almost everybody. Even like a lot of pros. AJ Kohler is a, a local guy from Las Vegas who's on the tour who's very advanced. He got into it during COVID. He was a former hockey player. Mm -hmm. Um. But what's, end, what, what's, what's really happening is most of this growth is coming from grassroots. That's a good thing. What do you mean by sort grassroots? Of. What do you mean by grassroots? It's just oh, like, like word tennis? of mouth. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like people transitioning and, and like they hear about this game. Somebody introduces it to them. They, a friend tells a friend tells a friend. Yeah, I think it's only a matter of time before the moneymaker effect becomes like Cuban, LeBron, and like things like that. Like getting like right. live streams of like them playing and stuff like that. Oh, well, it's going to happen. Like, it, it's going to happen. Uh, it's booming and it's going to continue to boom. I agree with Brian. Like 10 year growth of pickleball, I think, is going to be astronomical. Yeah. I think there's a solid chance that it is a more widely played sport than hockey in America. How do we capitalize on that? Wow. That's monetarily. That's what I'm right. That's what I'm trying to say <laughs> yeah. is that For our like, own benefit. Right. Well, right. Not just us. Not right. not us, no, but no, like if you're fine. a creator in the space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you see something like this, the writing's on the wall, right? Gary Vee's very yeah. good at this. Like he he often projects new trends. Uh, he was on TikTok before anybody else saw TikTok. Same thing with Snapchat. Like he was an early adopter to both, right? Mm. So when we see this market that is in an early boom state that we recognize not only will have longevity, but will continue its boom state for quite some period of time because now there is uh, some big players with a lot of money coming into it. That should Wapa be... is going to be one of them. He's going to have $600 million that he needs to invest. Right? <laughs> yeah, 620. 20. 20, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that should be a ripe opportunity for people who are ancillary to the industry that are looking to create content, that are looking to do uh, you know, coaching or uh, develop tours, like whatever the case may be, right? It's not obvious to me though, how you capitalize. And maybe that's a lot of just trauma from being in a semi-mature space and trying to do all of that stuff, like develop all those channels myself. Right, well, what you're saying is you don't know what the best steps forward are to actually capitalize. Well, in the past, it would have been just create content. Just do anything? Yeah, just At do anything. High quality. But, there's, yeah. but there's high quality content out Correct. there that's not being seen and it's By way the, better than anything you could even dream of. By the best in the world, <laughs> yeah, too, right? Yeah. It's not some rum dum that I've never heard of yeah. who seems like he might be competent at pickleball but also just picked it up during the pandemic and decided to start a YouTube channel. No, no, no. It's one of like the 10 best ranked pros on tour. Imagine like there's so little money in pickleball that right. one of the 10 best ranked pros on tour is making training videos that are getting viewed by 3000 people. Yeah. It's like, it's, funny. it's like if uh like, like peak, like hand history, Doug was only getting five K views. Correct. Yeah. That's pretty wild. And it's weird because when I talk to people at pickleball courts or whatever, and I say, how do you get better? So much of what they say is I watch videos. Well, they're absolutely at the phase of the, the 2006 to 2010 phase of poker, where it's I play 90% of the time, and then I watch people who are better than me play 10% of the time. Right. There's so no, it's like, like pickleball salt. Yeah, you're just sweating. And you're playing, and yeah. that's it. Right. Nobody's strategizing. Nobody's, like, sitting down, looking at the X's and O's. Like, that's the part of the game that fascinates me. Mm -hmm. Again, like, I recognize, like, it'll be years before I can execute some shots that I recognize are just, like, no-brainers. Right. And I see other people take them. And that's right? just because of the ceiling level, and they're just talented yeah. and can do it. And, and the way that it helps my game develop is that it allows me to defend against shots that otherwise most people won't defend against because yeah. I see it. Right? It's the same way as people thinking that poker is just a game of luck. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. the exact to some degree. same thing. Yeah. Because there are a lot of variables. Right. But when you can account for uh, certain variables being weighted higher than others, then you just anticipate. So I do a lot of that. There's, there's a lot of me getting burnt 
because I'm jumping a shot that I think is a higher probability to be taken. Mm -hmm. And if I just play neutral, I probably just get burnt on both shots. Right. But I look better getting burnt, so to speak. Right. So like if I just if I just hold my ground, for instance, and I know that they have available to them a backhand roll to my backhand that I'm not going to be able to defend yeah. or a kill down the middle that I'm not going to be able to defend. What I do is I jump the kill down the middle to neutralize it and then they take the backhand roll. Right. It's all about aesthetics, man. Right. I get it. So it's like whenever they take the, whenever they go for the, 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 the kill down the middle and I'm there to defend it, everybody's like, wow. It's like, like how did you know? It's like, right. well, it's I like, guess and I guess correctly. Or yeah. It's like I anticipated the shot that I thought I could defend. Right. Because if I jump the other one, we're fucking dead. And that's a harder shot for them to take. So it's a lower percentage. Man, now that you've <laughs> kind of made me become more of an adult about the cost benefit analysis of thinking about things in terms of decisions and good, bad decisions, I want to play pickleball. But at the same time, I realize what's the point? Well, <laughs> right? Like now I'm in this poker phase. You know, I'm back. I'm but, back to poker. Well, the, the pickleball point isn't monetarily speaking. Sure, of right? course. The They're, point is to shut up Berkey at this point. No, right? I like, like that's this. why I'm playing. Please, please. You have I'll, nothing I'll else to there. do with your I'll time. I'll be out please. there. This, uh, I'm going Please. out today. Uh, it, look, the biggest uh, win the, for me of all would be that Conrad's on the fucking PPA tour a I'm year and a half from now. Mad shit. Just talking shit to all reporters, meeting Mark Cuban, saying like, I'm gonna yeah, Matt Berkey motivated me to shut his fucking face up. No, no, Here no. I am. I'm just going to talk shit to you on the court every day. That's what no, I'm doing. I love, I love when that. you leave the house, I, I leave the house. I would like to live in the universe where Conrad becomes like a 5-0 face of the pickleball, of the pickleball world. And, every, <laughs> and everything he does with an interview at the end, he goes, thank you for the spite <laughs> Every I just leave it like that it's like, it's I was like, gonna leave it right, thank you for the spite great game and like, we'll see you next week yup and thanks Matt for the spite honestly what, what this will accomplish out of me is I will actually get a good sparring partner out of it because he could fucking challenge the shit out of me playing singles yeah because he's so fast, yeah, right? Like, he's good at singles. Because he's he, he's good at singles because he can get to the ball. No, nah, I can't breathe. Hit. I can't breathe that much. So. That's because you have to eat Pepsi and pizza. You have the yeah. triple P diet. It, it, it is that's the triple not the P diet. reason why, but you know, like, uh, yeah. Pepsi, popcorn, pizza. Well, I, I do want to qualify. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to dampen this, but like, he's good against. He's good against. Uh, well, specifically me, um, because I'm weak. I'm I'm like very weak and easily exposed at singles. Like yeah. my forehand is not good. Uh, you take better shots than me, and I beat you. Yeah, I mean, you and I are a very close match, and you're significantly more talented at singles. Mm -hmm. But it's because I will try to meticulously pick you apart. Conrad's <laughs> athletic enough where uh, where me taking those shots will come with a huge margin of error because he's just fast enough to close the gap. Um, but his 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 technical ability is very poor. Yeah, right now, because I don't play often. Right I, got, I got some things to say. I got some things to say. The chat wants to chime in on this. They said, if Matt put all, all of this pickleball thought, he'd have at least, at least four satellite tickets to give to his listeners. Wow. <laughs> so they're saying that you got to channel this shit elsewhere. Corey said, spike country. Let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back in pickleball. I love pickleball. I love, uh, I love a lot of things, but I did like actually cashing a tournament yesterday. I was right, just about to get go. into that. I did it. Over let's 18. Go. Over 18, and he's back, still in the bread, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. You We're are good. a good poker player, damn it. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good job. That Land is a lot of eggs. Wow, look at that. Look, nice. That's a nice amount of likes. Our, mm. our boy Landy gets third <laughs> for 12.3K. What, what, what happened? Why didn't we win it? What, did we get scammed? Uh, so, honestly, I did a bit of scamming uh, prior to the tournament, as tournaments are, where you have to win a lot of all-ins, be on the right side of some spots, mm -hmm. where got in kings versus tens and jacks, and flopped king high, turned 10. So, That's king nice high one. was whew, nice. <laughs> yeah. And then beat ace-queen with ace-jack, where flop comes king-jack-jack, -jack, turn nine, river oh. 10, oh my. Uh, in the money. So, that was a, that was a, that was a good one. <laughs> Does propel you further on yeah. into the tournament. Yeah, of course. And then there are some spots where certain hands don't actually want to open jam, but when you're playing lower stakes tournaments, people will put in too many chips from too early of positions with not the greatest hands. So things that look like coolers should actually just be either min induced calls or min folds or things of along those lines where I was on the right side of picking up a good hand that calls versus the jam, where I had someone pipped. Like final two tables, one of jacks versus nines for 
13 bigs, which is massive when the average stack is so low with 30 minute blinds, where now winning that versus losing allows you to actually have a good chance to make a deeper run than just getting a 12th, where in certain situations, hands would actually play differently. And I might call a jam with eights, but I had jacks and he had nines. And that's just like a massive shift in the way of me winning the tournament. Of course. And then I ended up winning a pretty big all in with a hand that probably in like ICM land would not call. But when you know someone's jamming too wide and so much is up top, sometimes like risks have to be taken where I, I called off, I min called off from low jack with 13 but with ace eight, a seven suited versus jack eight of jack eight suited. Oh, that's which, nice. Yeah. So held there and then scammed scam someone blind versus blind in a pretty big pot to have the chip lead four left and then from there had some unfortunate situations where you kind of just get card racked against and have top of range have to face two big bets and then when the average stack four-handed is 20 bigs you lose one pot even though you're chip leading so to speak everyone's back to even slash you don't have the lead anymore yeah. so from there lost a few pots uh got third Jammed seven bigs from button with queens. Uh, small blind had king jack. Five three deuce turned king river king. Ugh. And uh, that was it. 13 for 12.2. But I'm, ha I'm really happy with it. I'm happy with the way I played. I think I definitely still made a lot of mistakes. A lot of errors everywhere. But when it comes to kind of just relaxing, I was really good at that. I had a really like a good a better time with just realizing you can't end the tournament in 30 minutes. You, know you just why? have to sit there and appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know why? Why is that? Because you're unlimited. You I'm unlimited. <laughs> My patience these days is unlimited. I can go over 100, but I'll still be there tomorrow. That's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Connor Stowe, David Jackson, and Aaron Massey for um, chopping the 1600 MSP. Oh, yeah. Nice. MSP, T. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Wow, four-way chop. Yeah. Three. Three three we both finished mm -hmm. it. We both tournaments finished at the same time and it was 3 a.m. And at that point, they all kind of had pretty even stacks. I looked at the payouts. It was like 156, 154, 138 or something along yeah, those lines. Something like that. And they're like, we're just fucking tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> we're just over it. I feel like this better. only happens on like mid stake buy ins. Oh, like there's just no yeah. day three to finish the rest of the tournament. Uh, I mean, whether it's a structure thing or the money just means more specifically to like that player pool or, yeah. or you're playing for that many more buy-ins or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. but you just don't see a 10K get chopped three ways yeah. anymore. No, yeah. It's pretty interesting because I guess... I don't think... Which that, is really weird because chopping should be... Especially ICM chops should be like heavily incentivized. You would think, yeah. right, too, like if... Especially like you said, if the money means a lot to these people, they don't... They think maybe the skill edge is... Pretty even, and it's super late at night, Man. and now you're playing for way more money than you usually Man. play for. Uh, you saved chop me. Chop it up. You saved me from making a bad chop. Well, well I would have got a sick chop, but it was a bad I chop. I mean, he wasn't going to accept the quote-unquote bad chop. Yeah, um, but you told me not to look in numbers, which was good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that was a situation here. It was David Jackson and Aaron Massey involved in there, that chop. So, like, I mean, they're good. Yeah. It's tortoise approved, for sure. I, I'm just surprised more tournaments don't chop. I mean, I guess maybe it has to do with the financing of it. Like when you start to get to the higher stakes, the fact you're only playing for like 15 or 20% yeah. chopping, you're not really gambling for that much. Like right. you might yeah. be playing a heads up match for like 500K. And also you have to play a lot of these out, don't you? Like no. just because of television reasons or? I mean, maybe, but like you can always leave money up top. Yeah, sure. Right. Or if like you, obviously if you know mm -hmm. the people that you're playing against, you can just like. Or well, like WSOP. Won't facilitate. They're the only the ones that yeah, they won't facilitate. They're, the, they're the only ones that for sure don't facilitate a chop. I'm sure there are yeah. others that like uh, it's it's casino by discretion or whatever. Yeah. Um, that's well. That's why you told me not to chop was because I was on stake. So like yeah, it, I was playing for you weren't playing for that much exactly. At least for all intents and purposes. Yeah, I think it was like a 70k pay jump. It was the difference between 130 and 201. Yeah, it so it was massive. like a 70k pay jump, but for you it was only like a 20k pay jump. Exactly. And it's just like, well, get the experience, play. You'll make 20k in other spots, and also you're way better than this guy. Yeah, just play, and it ended up working out. Yeah, you scammed them. Yeah, <laughs> get your money. Scam. Didn't scam really for scam. me. <laughs> Didn't really scam. If you haven't already, <laughs> go on over to WPT Global. Give them a download. They're just giving away the seats. 
100, as I mentioned before, 150 seats people are getting sent to the WPT championship with 12K packages. They're getting it popping over there. That tournament is going to be so good. It's going to be fucking amazing. There are going to be <laughs> so many satellite winners. Listen, I mean, if you go to Canada, man, I'll come up with you and we'll, go, we'll get a seat. They, need to, get, they uh, need to get 1,500 players to meet the guarantee. We already know that like 10% of them are going to come from WPT Global. I think shit. They might have gave out like 175, honestly. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe. But um, so to be clear, uh, WPT Global is only accessible uh, to people outside of the United States. Right. But um, there's maybe a dozen of us influencers that are able to play on a whitelisted account that are forced to give away the packages. So, you know, as we continually accumulate these prizes, they're going to be given out. I'm sure for the majority of us, our following is in the United States. So uh, it's not like not being in the States uh, discludes you from being a part of this. But all of that aside, let's just understand that this event in December is going to be worldwide like one of the best events we've ever gotten to see. It's going to be a zoo, and it's going to be definitely one of the best events in the last 15 years in the States because, because you can, there's satellites into it where there's not – that doesn't really happen anymore, like online satellites into tournaments. Right, right. And I still think that there's going to be a somewhat small but likely sweat for the guarantee. Like I don't think they're just going to get 20 million in the prize I was going to ask really? if you think it's going to overlay. I think it's going to be a small probability. I, I think – you need fifteen hundred, correct? Yeah, it, I think the I think the total runners will be between fourteen and sixteen fifty. Five diamond got five hundred and eighty, right? Yeah. Uh, we add another one fifty. Let's say so that's seven hundred, and now like I need to make another eight hundred people. Okay, real quick for five diamond getting five eighty. Did you think that number was more or less than what you expected? It was exactly exactly what I expected. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, in December, I think eleven hundred is like very very viable so okay. i think like okay for this tournament not for five diamond for the win no five diamond oh you're saying like, for five if, if, if they, five diamond december. was in december if it were still in december right. why that, that those are like the average numbers they've been doing for the last three mm -hmm. or four years mm. it's been somewhere between like a thousand and eleven hundred just because of people traveling in end of year right before the holidays people have a big excuse to get to vegas uh also with tax purposes like people were ready to fire a little bit harder mm. uh you have to remember it's a re-entry so like these aren't all unique entrants. No, of course, of course. Probably like 800 uh, in the field, 300 unique around there. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the win? Uh, it's it's re-entry three day ones. Unlimited as far as I... Unlimited. It's unlimited. <laughs> I just wanted you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Unlimited. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think I think the, the number of players will be, tweet, be between like 1,400 and 1,600. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a small chance of an overlay. I think there's a small chance that it goes over 15 million too. Okay, because I, th I, I think it does go over 15 million because like just sitting here right now thinking about it, if we just take the 600 people that played or entries that entered the Bellagio 5 Diamond, you add another probably 300 people from satellite seats um, from live satellite. Uh, probably. No, total. So that's like 900 Yeah, but of people. those 300, almost none of them are going to re-enter. Yes, that is true. I would say like probably 10% of them will re-enter. So you're talking about getting like Six. a total of 350 entrants out of the satellite winners period. Yes. Uh, which means that you still need to come up with like 600. 1,150 entries. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, otherwise, obviously they don't need to be unique and most pros are going to be willing to fire like five bullets. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's a soft field. A lot of the pros are just going to get through on one or two. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I'm excited. I'm trying to throw my hat in the ring. I saw a lot of giveaways out there. My boy Jamin's giving one away. It's like fucking Christmas. It's yeah. fucking Christmas. Cotty needs a piece. You know, Cotty needs a piece. So please go like and um, retweet my thing on Twitter to get Jamin's attention because we need a seat. Okay, yeah. real quick question. At what time of the year would you start to say that Christmas music is appropriate? Oh, my God, never. After Thanksgiving. Uh, yep. Never. After Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. The day before Christmas and then the day after. Why are you such a fucking Scrooge, man? It just plays everywhere all the time. 
I why, hate it. Why are you so hey, discreet? Nah, I, I get it. I what, get it. What, you start what's more it so iconic. early that you're, you're sick of the Christmas songs by the time Christmas rolls what's around. What's more iconic than being dressed like Conrad, walking down the streets of New York, listening to it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. With mm-hmm. snow falling. I, I can just that, like that's see like a little snow yeah, falling on you right now. This is a movie scene. Right? Bro, look at his smile true. right now. Yeah. You got a good point. <laughs> you love Christmas time You got the York. fucking holiday cup from goddamn yeah. Starbucks. Yeah, Are you rich again? Nah, I actually... I got this cup yesterday, uh-huh. and then I put the coffee in today, so. Mm. Yeah. Ah. It's beginning to look a lot like, like Christmas. Says the guy that doesn't want Christmas music. Everywhere Get the fuck out of here. Everywhere we go. On that note, My we... mom loves Christmas. Anyways. I love carols. Uh, yeah, we know. <laughs> I'm you only a Scrooge on actual Christmas Day. <laughs> Why? Okay. I don't know. Something about family. And yeah, that's why. Family not now. being loved. I don't know. That's Who probably knows? why I'm here. I love you, Matt. <laughs> we all love you. All right, guys. On that note, we are out of here. We'll be back in studio tomorrow. Maybe we'll find a guest or something. Johnny Vibes is coming in. There you go. We confirm. found a guest. Like, right. confirm. <laughs> we found a guest. <laughs> I said like, confirm. Thank God we found <laughs> a guest. Please like, subscribe. If you want us to talk more about Pickleball, let us know in the comments. They do not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they should. Another note: We're gonna get better with our weekend warrior picks. Yes, because that was bullshit. You're goddamn right. I'm about to go seven and two down the stretch. <laughs> I think I can close the show now. We're out. Peace. <laughs> I might go nine and zero against the spread.